You know, everybody, when I'm teaching my private lessons with my students on Zoom or Skype, one of the most frequently asked questions is, hey, I'm thinking about picking up a seven string. Do you recommend it? More often than not, I follow up that question with another question and I say, why do you want to get a seven string? Why do you feel so inclined to get a seven string? And almost everybody always says, because I want to play heavy music. And I'm like, yeah, dude, hey, I'm right there with you. However, a seven string doesn't automatically equate to heaviness and isn't necessarily the most effective tool for getting heavy tones. So in this video, I want to explain why a seven string may not be the best choice for you. Guys, if you're anything like me, you probably love heavy tones and you love extended range guitars, hence the reason why you clicked on this video, or you're at the very least teetering on the fence about potentially picking up a seven string. Anyway, man, if you do me a favor, please like this video, share it out there if you want, and subscribe if you haven't done so. I really appreciate you, okay? Thank you for the continued support. So I've got some bullet points and some talking points in this video. Feel free to agree or disagree with me down below in the comments. This video is all in good fun, okay? Simply coming from a place of trying to educate and help you all. So getting back to my first point of seven strings don't necessarily equate to heaviness. What is even heavy? I mean, that's such a subjective thing and it's impossible to measure like objectively what heavy is. Sure, a lot of more modern and heavier music has been written on seven strings and eight strings and nine strings and baritones, blah, blah, blah. However, you don't always need to be in seven string territory to write a good heavy riff. I'll give you four examples. Ashes of the Wake and Sacrament by Lamb of God, Vicarious and the Pot by Tool, and Andy from Every Time I Die. He has a great quote out there on the internet, and he says, it's about the riff, it's not about the tuning. Basically, all my guitars are in drop D, so uh, you don't have to be heavy and tune real low. It's about the riff, it's not about the f***ing tuning. So a seven string isn't an automatic cheat code to write awesome heavy music. You still gotta be able to make the guitar talk and choose the right notes. There's only 12 notes in music, and just because you're in seven string territory, doesn't mean you're gonna pick all the right notes and all the good notes. And you know how to talk or make the guitar talk, that's the key. Another thing I want to talk about is the two potential scale lengths for standard scale, quote unquote, seven strings. There's two scales with a seven string, generally speaking, 25 and a half inches and 26 and a half inches. Now I hear you guys right now, well, what about 27? What about 28? What about baritone seven strings? Now we're starting to blur the line, like with baritones and seven string. We're going to get to that towards the end of this video. For right now, solely sticking with what a standard scale seven string is, they come in two scales, 26 and a half and 25 and a half, generally speaking. So from my own personal experience, I like on a seven string, a 25 and a half inch scale for drop A and anything lower, I like 26 and a half. However, in my opinion, I don't really feel like you can go past drop G, we'll say on a 26 and a half inch scale seven string. That's just my opinion. But if you want to go even lower, then you have to start to ask the question of like, well, do I want to get a baritone? Do I want to get a baritone seven string? Like, why do I want to get that low? And what is my overall creative outlook and vision on the guitar? We're going to talk about that at the very end of this video. So in my opinion, when you add a string, but don't really extend the scale all that much, you really don't get that much more bang for your buck. On 25 and a half inches, I wouldn't recommend going down to drop A any further. And like I said, 26 and a half inches, drop G, I think is kind of like where I'd personally feel comfortable. My whole point with the seven string scale length is this. Just because you add an extra string doesn't really necessarily equate to being able to keep the string tension and able to hold intonation with lower tunings. Again, kind of getting back to the point of what's your creative vision? Do you want to go lower? If that's the case, why and what's your ultimate goal with going lower? We're going to talk about that, like I said. Another reason why a seven string might not be your best choice is because they're actually harder to play. The necks are wider and you have more strings. I mean, just more things that you have to worry about, essentially. I personally take a lot of pride in having the standard tuned fretboard memorized by heart. I think that's really cool and a really valuable tool and skill set you need as a guitar player. So adding another string is just another thing I have to personally keep in mind with theory at times. This guitar is in drop A, and if you look at it, it really is essentially just like a standard tuned guitar with one extra fun string. That's what I like to call it, the fun string. But there is a bit of a learning curve with a seven string. A seven string is slightly different than just a regular six string, and it's a specific tool for a specific job, and there is a learning curve. You can't just hop on one of these and just fly. It does take a little bit of getting used to. So if you personally have the mindset of like, I need to master a six string before I go to seven string, I wouldn't recommend a seven string. I'm not telling you that's what you need to do. I know there's a lots of people out there who just like kind of started on a seven string and that's just what they play, you know, from here going forward. So there's no right or wrong answer for all this, but just keep in mind that these things are a little bit harder to play because of the obvious, you have an extra string to play. Next reason why you might not want to get a seven string is they are expensive, more expensive than say like it's six string counterpart. A lot of companies, whenever they have a seven string, they usually have a six string variant and or equivalent and the seven string across the board 
10 out of 10 times is always more expensive than the six string. And there's two reasons why they're more expensive. One, resources. A seven string is literally a bigger guitar and using more wood, especially on the neck, right? And reason number two is there's not as much seven strings out in the world. So they are a little bit limited and a little bit rare. So, you know, an upcharge of a couple hundred bucks compared to a six string makes a little bit of sense, right? So if you want to embark on the journey of collecting seven strings, just keep in mind that they're going to cost a little bit more than a six string. Kind of speaking on the collection side of things, if you want to have a lot of seven strings, keep in mind that there's not as many out there, less options. Seven strings kind of suffer the lefty guitar player treatment where like they kind of, they get, they get a fair share of, of models and options and colors and pickup configurations and stuff like that. Right. However, they just don't get as much love as like a flagship you know, Fender Stratocaster or something like that. There's vastly way more guitar players who play six strings than seven strings. And honestly, like apart from rock and metal, who plays seven string guitars? Nobody really, right? Generally speaking, don't at me, okay? I don't need to hear about the one time this one country artist played a seven string for one song. Like, you get what I'm saying. And last but not least, I wanna talk about what is your ultimate creative goal and vision as a guitar player? And this bullet point for this video is honestly the biggest question you have to ask of why do you wanna get a seven string? If you as a guitar player are a riff writer, if you just love the low notes, like you kinda of like bass, but you also like guitar. If you just wanna just hang down here and just like jam and like, you know, the low baritone sounds that I kinda of create, you know what I mean? Like if that's your bread and butter, maybe a seven string isn't the best bet for you. An alternative, and more often than not, a cheaper alternative is a baritone guitar of some sort. That's where I kind of fell in love with baritones and more or less like carved out a little niche for myself using baritone guitars, especially on this channel and just, you know, me as an artist, right? I have my own creative outlet that is baritone guitars versus a seven string because I can get what I want to get out of my head onto the fretboard on a baritone when it pertains to like the low bouncy riffs that I create. That being said, if you love that sound, but you're also a shredder and or at the very least a lead player in some capacity, that's when you got to pick up a seven string in my opinion. For example, I've been teasing my new album to you guys. You guys want to hear a little sample? Here's a perfect example of low tuned riffs and solos in a song. This very song that I wrote was using this guitar. Here's a little sample. <laughs> I'm so proud of that song. I'm so excited to share my album with you guys in time. But you see what I'm saying? That song needed a specific tool because it has a certain set of notes that a baritone guitar can't get. I'm in drop A. I really don't like drop A six strings. So it all depends on what you want to do. If you want to have just riffs, go baritone or just stick with a six string and just tune down a little bit. You can't go down to like drop F per se on a six string, but you can get down in the drop B's, drop A sharps, drop A's sometimes. Hell, I'm sure there's people that go lower. You know what I'm saying? But if you want best of both worlds, if you want low riffs and leads at the same time, this is where you should pick up a seven string. At the end of the day, it's all about personal preference and what you wanna do when you're jamming, creating your own music. So everybody, that's gonna kinda wrap up my thoughts and opinions on this topic. This video is certainly not to discourage anybody from picking up a seven string. I got one in my hand, I love seven strings. However, I am predominantly a six string guitar player who likes to hop on a seven string guitar every once in a while. So everybody, I'd love to hear from you guys down below in the comments section. Leave your thoughts and opinions on what I have to say. And uh, yeah, let's have a nice discussion. With that being said, be sure to subscribe on your way out the door. I'm out of here. Y'all stay safe, stay healthy, stay metal. See you guys next time. Later.